Hey stackers, I don't know if you've seen the news lately, but everyone is talking about NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Fungible, fungible. This sounds like one of those words you shouldn't say, but okay, anyway, you know me, I'm Logan, and this is the Stack It Forward playlist, where I'm breaking down stacks full of great links and resources, and this stack is all about NFTs, what they are, why they're getting so much attention, and whether or not you should be buying them. Are you ready? Let's jump in. So, okay, if you haven't heard, recently a JPEG file, basically, just sold for like 69 something million. And people are all freaking out because we've never seen digital art sell for so much money, especially that much money. So let's jump into my stack and cover some basics on like how this happened. So uh, let's start with like this New York Times article, I guess is a really good place to start. What just sold for 69 million? It was a non-fungible token, like we said, which operates in the blockchain. So it's similar to Bitcoin, but it's non-fungible instead of fungible. We'll get to that in just a moment. So art like this is selling for a lot of money when it's attached to something called an NFT, which is basically just a digital way to authenticate and track who's owned certain pieces of art. So let's keep going through this. Why is that a big deal? Why is tracking art or being able to measure who, not measure, but being able to see who's owned the art before you such a big deal? And you know, when I started thinking about this, it made me think about this Netflix documentary that I just watched. And it's all about how much fraudulent art there is moving through like the big auction houses in the big cities where art is selling for multiple millions. And if you don't know, there's a lot of money, investment capital that goes into the art market. It's a great place to try and hold your money and maybe make some, as well as being able to hang on to this really awesome piece of history and collectible art. So uh, like the issue with fraud in the art market is that people are making non-authentic pieces of art and selling them for multiple millions alongside their authentic counterparts. This documentary is really fun if you want to dig into like how that's all happening, but it's not just the art market. A lot of money moves around in the wine market as well. It's a great collectible item. And this documentary is all about this guy who counterfeited uh, and sold millions of dollars of fraudulent wine through some of the top auction wine houses. So this is a guy who in this documentary, he's well connected in wine culture and he was able through his influence to end up crashing the entire wine market, which was pretty crazy. Um, uh, just one more documentary about fraud. I live in Salt Lake, so this one really hit close to home. But here, a guy was basically using fraudulent, he, he was forging these documents and selling them as pieces of history. So he would sell journals entries or things like this of pieces of historical documentation to collectors and essentially back to the LDS church even. And to keep his web of lies spinning, he resorted to murder in the end. And that just goes to show the level of extent that these forgers will go to to make a product that looks and acts authentic in front of anyone who's inspecting it. And he even claims that it's really cool that he's the only one who knew they were forgeries until it all came out. So we really need a way to validate uh, a piece of art's existence and authentication. And that's sort of where this comes from. And through that, we're able to see things like how the digital art world is able to transform. You know, this one artist is able to sell his digital artwork now for 69 million. And that's because replication in the digital art community is way worse than in the physical art community because I can just go click copy and paste on my computer and within a few minutes, I can have that thing go viral across Facebook or online or however. I can email it out to a bunch of people. And with digital art, that's kind of the thing. When it goes viral, it's really neat to see uh, how everyone is adopting it or everyone is looking at it at the same time. So blockchain comes in here to kind of save the day. And let me show you, since I'm not the best at explaining this, this is an NSL clip. Saturday Night Live just did a parody on blockchain but they did a pretty decent job explaining this, so I'll let them do that. NFTs are insane, insane. built on a blockchain, That's right. a digital ledger of transactions. Okay, great video. SNL did an awesome job on this one. Uh, you should totally watch the whole thing. But the takeaway here is that 
NFTs are pieces of a blockchain sold as art. So where have I seen that before? I know I have. Uh, it's in my stack. Over here we have CryptoKitties. Do you remember CryptoKitties? I saw these like a year and a half ago and I thought WTF. But they make a lot more sense now. At the time I thought why are people paying money for JPEG files of cats? but they're actually pretty cool. In this video, it kind of shows you how you explain. You can buy and trade them like baseball cards, but they have DNA, so you can actually breed them together and make new crypto kitties out of the combination. And depending on what you get, depending on how your two kitties come together, it creates a potential for a rarity in kitty. They're not just for profit, they're also for collecting and for fun, but there's potential to make money on your crypto kitties and you can see the crypto kitty trading market if you go to this website and it's kind of fascinating to see like over the last few hours like what kitties have been bought and sold yeah so the average price of kitty right now looks like it's around 115 dollars nothing too crazy we've had some kitty sales you know looks like the highest one was almost 100 bucks but last night i was looking on here and i saw one over a thousand so they do go up and down but i guess maybe depending on how rare they are so that's crypto kitties and those are pretty small numbers and that's a little bit different if i show you this again each one of these kitties and this goes to talk a lot about the blockchain aspect and how this is different than bitcoin uh, if you look at each one of these kitties they're different and that makes them non-fungible or unique so bitcoins they're all the same and so there's i think 50,000 crypto kitties on the crypto kitty blockchain so at some point generation zero of these kitties will reach 50,000 and there won't be able to be any more and that creates rarity in itself so uh, kind of just the same thing as bitcoin except for each kitty is unique whereas each bitcoin is the same making bitcoin fungible and crypto kitties non-fungible so that non-fungible token can be associated with any piece of art uh, these are a little bit different, but I don't know if you guys know Logan Paul from YouTube. He drives me kind of crazy sometimes, but he just came out and he released this card. This it, It's an image of himself that he made as a baseball card. And it basically says, Lo, it says Logan Paul at the bottom. He sold this thing for like $5 million. It's crazy. And let's see, Steve Aoki actually too. I think this is a little bit cooler. He put some music to this. I can't hear it right now, but he named this Harry and it sold for $888,000, which is pretty awesome. It's not, a, it's a lot of money, but not 69 million, you know, not what Beeple was making. And Beeple actually did another one recently, which is called Crossroads. And I really like this one. And I don't know if you, I don't know if you get it, like why you would pay, I think this one sold for like 6.6 .6 million. Yeah. And it's cool. It just loops like this. I think it's pretty awesome actually, but you know, I'm going to pull this up. Have you guys seen the Samsung iFrame TV or frame TV? So if you don't think that digital art is worthwhile, like Samsung is making, these are at Best Buy right now. You can go buy one of these. They've been out for a, a little while, but they look and act just like pictures where it looks like it has a matting, but you can display your digital artwork on your wall. Then you can flip a switch and it's actually your TV. So the TV blends into any space and it also provides a way for you to show off your digital artwork. So the world is changing and it's coming to a point where you buy something like this Beeple Crossroads and you'll have a place in your home to display it and enjoy it. And it's not just a file on your computer. And uh, you know, it's, it's also, it's not just art that is being impacted by this either. Uh, let's move on to this Rolling Stone article that talks about how Kings of Leon just came out and announced that they're going to, or they already did, release their album with an NFT attached to it. And I watched a documentary where these guys are being interviewed about it, and they have a difficult time even explaining what they've done. Like, it's so difficult for people to wrap their heads around this, but what they know is that they've been able to go direct to market from without having to go through a middleman or an agency to manage them and so these creators are actually able to connect to their community and nfts are just uh they're just just going like this as far as how it's impacting the music community uh blau also just came out and i blau is an awesome guy i i've seen him dj multiple times i've met him a couple times and he's a really fun guy to talk to super super smart but let's see he just 
sold his album for like 11 something million, 11.7 million. And he has all these different plans for what he's gonna do with his NFTs. And it's really fascinating to hear him talk about, down here in the bottom, I have a video with Blau talking to Graham Stephan about how this worked for him and how he basically made $11.7 million overnight when he released a series of, I think it's 33 different NFTs. And just some of the highlights, when his fans buy the NFT associated with his new album, they're also going to be sent a vinyl copy and he's only gonna print 33 copies. And so along with the NFT, they'll get this rare vinyl to go with it. And rare vinyl is another market that is definitely collectible and a lot of money moves around in. So it's, it's interesting to see how Blau is blending these together and how he's using physical products to go along with like this NFT investment. And I think Blau really gets this and it's an awesome, it's about an hour long interview but he really explained some cool stuff in there uh, about that but it's not just music either okay so you can associate um, an NFT with anything and that is, I don't think there's anything better to explain that than how Jack Dorsey the CEO of Twitter put up his first tweet his first ever tweet and that's kind of funny because he's the CEO of Twitter you know so it's like his tweet and he says that he's gonna offer it for sale so he did that and you can see how many times it's changed hands here in the ledger on, on this website, but it looks like the last time it sold was for 2.915 million, like holy cow, $3 million for a tweet that says, just setting up my Twitter. I mean, it's just too funny. I, there's some of these that make sense and some of them that just don't to me. And if you wanna start looking around to invest in your own NFTs, they're not all in one place. You know, there's not like a Walmart of NFTs right now, but there's a few places that are trying. Nifty Gateway here, OpenSea, Super Rare. These are some trading platforms where you can go browse and view uh, what digital artists are offering and kind of explore the NFT world a little bit. They're not all super expensive. You can pay just a few dollars to a few hundred to a few million, obviously. So kind of interesting, but uh, those are fun to check out. I've been talking about this for a while, so I think that's enough for me. But these videos here at the bottom, I, another great place to get started. There's two videos here from Gary V and Blau actually references Gary V in his video as well. Gary V has it, he makes it super simple for everyone to understand NFTs and where the impact is gonna hit and why they matter to you. So before I get started trading, I would totally check out Gary V, check out YouTube and anyone who's talking about NFTs. And, and yeah, so that's that. I really thank you guys so much for watching. This is me stacking it forward with NFTs on Platstack. I hope you learned something today and I hope you kind of had fun. Until next time, happy stacking.